What's up guys? I wanted to share with you some essentials that you need in like a plant parent starter kit. So I'm gonna go over some bare bone essentials to start out to make sure that your plants are thriving. So all of these things are super essential. These are things that you are going to really need when you start having plants in your house or even start collecting plants. You're gonna wanna keep these tools and these items on hand. At the end, I do have three honorable mentions that I will kind of throw in there, but I'll get to why they're honorable mentions and kind of let you know how to kind of get away with it if you don't want to get those as well. These are also going to be really fun things if you know somebody who has a uh, love for plants but they're not really collecting or they're just starting out collecting you can even do like a fun gift this is just like a small amount of items that you could just kind of throw in a little gift basket for like housewarming or anything like that and the holidays are coming up so those are um just some ideas that i just wanted to throw out because i thought that'd be really cute like a little like plant parent starter kit so let's talk about five bare bone essentials that you need when you're starting to get into houseplants. Say you went to the plant store and you just bought your first plant. I would say the first thing that's essential, and this might be a little bit of controversy, but I think one thing that is essential, at least for me, are cute pots. So say you just bought this and Sony Eye, and you see this cute Monstera pot. You can literally just plop that right in and you can just go from there. Now, obviously this is in a plastic clear solo cup, but you get the idea. If it's in a grower pot, you can find like really cheap planters at like Target. I got this at Target, um, but you can get them at like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Michaels, and Joanne Fabrics. Craft stores have like planters, but Getting cute pots are essential. At least for me, I have to have a cute pot. Now, you will also have your kind of style. You guys can probably tell that my style is white pots, but you can get so many different fun I like designs and stuff for them. Like, I think that the cute pots are essential. I mean, obviously you're gonna wanna get your plant in a pot. Now, the reason why I said it's a little controversial is because you don't need, your plant will be fine in a grower pot. Like you can just like plop it up and whatever. But for me, I have to like repot it. It won't bother me if I don't put my plants in a planter. So I absolutely need to get a cute pot just to kind of like, I don't know, make my living space a lot more aesthetic. I mean, you really wanna just make sure that your plant will have a good drainage in a pot that you find. Which brings me to my next topic. The next thing I will say is essential, is good quality potting soil. Now, when I say good quality potting soil, I don't mean getting the cheapest brand you can find. I will say, I use Fox Farm Ocean Forest Soil. You don't have to use that, but in my experience, I absolutely love it. It is like the best soil. Literally every one of my plants is planted in that. When I first started in collecting plants and everything, I would use Miracle Grow. <laughs> Sorry. I was getting fungus gnats. I was getting root rot. I wasn't mixing my soils properly. So making sure that you get a good potting soil and also getting additives like charcoal, perlite, bark. Honestly, for me, and I will recommend this to anybody who is just starting out because you don't want to have to try to treat root rot, but I would say the more drainage, the better. So basically my potting soil formula is 50% Fox Farm Ocean Forest Soil, 25% perlite, and 25% bark. That's a really good standard kind of mix. Now, when I say bark, I get an orchid mix that has charcoal 
and coarse perlite in there as well. The coarse perlite is just a little bit like bigger. So it's got like a lot of big chunky pieces. That is kind of like my go-to mix for most of my plants. So you wanna make sure that you invest in good potting soil. I, I promise you guys, like when I say quality over quantity, I mean it. Trying to deal with root rot and fungus gnats is just not a fun thing. I think that some potting soil brands have better quality control. I'm not trying to rag on miracle Grow. There are a lot of products that they offer that I love. I actually use miracle Grow potting soil on my outdoor plants and they absolutely thrive in that and they love it. Again, I do add some additives to it, but I, they are completely happy outside. The next bare bone essential that I wanna talk about that some people lately have not been loving is moisture meters. So moisture meters are a great thing to have, honestly. I have heard a lot of people kind of saying that moisture meters aren't super accurate. Now, if you look at the moisture meter, it's got numbers one through 10. Here's an easy way to kind of get around the fact that it's not super accurate. Break it up into three sections. So I do dry, wet, medium. Really wet, it's perfect, too dry. This thing isn't super accurate. I used to say like, oh, I'd water my plants when it gets to a three or whatever. Don't listen to me, don't listen to old Amanda. Listen to me now. <laughs> I could have used this as an honorable mention because there are other things that you can use to replace that, like a steak, like a wooden steak. You can use like a wooden dowel, a chopstick that you have just in your silverware drawer from like takeout. You can use like any of that stuff and it will be completely fine. I like this because you can reuse it. So say you use a chopstick and you put it in the soil and it's wet, you're gonna have to wait for that chopstick to dry out. So this is going to be a little bit easier, I think. These are really, good to have even if they're not super super accurate just kind of go with that and it should give you a good enough guide to let you know when it's time to water so the next bare bone essential that you need for your plants is going to be my absolute favorite thing this thing has kept my plants alive this has brought my plants back to life i can't i can't recommend this enough and that is super thrive this stuff is amazing i'm telling you right now if you are new to growing plants this is going to be your best friend this helps prevent against transplant shock so say you bring home that plant and you want to plant it in the planter if you don't know what you're doing and you're a little rough with your plants or your plant is just sensitive this is going to help it adjust into that plant better this has also helped my fiddly fig. I have said this every time I mention this product, it is the thing that has kept my fiddly fig alive. This has tons of vitamins. It really does help your plants thrive. I would say, as an honorable mention with this, I would say fertilizer would probably be another good thing to get. My favorite is Foliage Pro. I love that stuff. It's really, really good. I also love Joyful Dirt. Both of those things are really easy fertilizers to use. The reason why I'm not saying to get it right now is because most potting soils will fertilize your plants for four to six months. So you don't really need to go out right away and go get a fertilizer. I would recommend getting it or even um, getting like liquid dirt, which is kind of like a nutrient for your plant. Once you start getting into the water additives, it can get kind of messy. But I would suggest Super Thrive is what you should get starting out. This is going to be your best friend. This will also help your plants adapt. Also want to mention that this actually was the thing that helped my plant spring back to life um, after I got all my imports. This is definitely just a, this is definitely a, a dream to have. And then the last thing before we get into our honorable mentions is pest repellent, pest treatment. You have to have this stuff. I'm telling you, please 
get this. Let's talk about systemic. Systemic is also becoming my best friend. I love it. I know that there are environmental concerns with systemic, but as long as you're not using it on your outdoor plants or plants that you will be eating, this is a great thing to have. Basically, I like to call this like a flea treatment for your plants. So if you think about how like a flea treatment works, you put it on your pet and once the flea bites your pet, the flea dies. This is kind of like that. So you put this on, you sprinkle it around onto the soil, water it in, and then it kind of goes into the plant system, goes into the leaves. Once the pests bite the leaves, the pest dies. Prevents it <laughs> for eight weeks. So eight weeks, you bring home a new plant, you put this on it, water it in, eight weeks, you're good. Now, if you get into really collecting plants, you're, this is going to be your best friend. You need this. Pests are going to happen. It's inevitable. They're just gonna happen. So you might as well just treat them <laughs> while you can. Now, say you bring home a plant and you find pests on it. This does take a few days or a couple weeks to work, to really work through that plant, depending on how big the plant is. So my next recommendation would be to get this. Now this, Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew is my favorite. Now this is the concentrate. Now I bought the concentrate because it's really uh, more budget friendly, but you do have to mix this. They do have a pre-mixed version. If you don't want to deal with mixing it, I totally get it. This is the thing that has killed my thrips. This has killed literally everything. These two things are something that you're gonna need down the road or right away. This is something that you will need to prevent. This is something you will need to treat. So pre treating and preventing for pests will also keep your plants super happy and make your life very easy with growing plants. So let's get into the honorable mentions. The reason why these things are honorable mentions is you will find that with all of these three things, I will give you basically alternatives that you can use that you probably already have in your house. But these are things that you can get down the road. These are going to be a kind of essential later on in your plant journey. So right now you don't need that, but later you probably will. So the first thing that I will say is kind of not really essential at this moment is watering cans. You don't need them. You really don't. You have cups at home, right? Like you have bowls, you have containers that you can take to your plants and water them. Now, depending on how big your plants are, you can just take them to the sink and rinse them off. I would say this would be fun to have just to like water sporadically, or if you have one plant that needs it, or you just want to like be cute and like water your plants. Sure, get a watering can, but you do not need this. I find myself watering plants with cups that are sitting on the counter. I'll just take it. Oh, there's, I know that there's filtered water in that. Let me water my Calethea. A water bottle. I always have to have a water bottle next to my bed, just in case I wake up in the middle of the night with like a, <clears throat> I don't know, a cough. <clears throat> as I cough. I take the rest of that water and I water my plants if it needs it. Nine out of 10 times, I take my plants to the sink. I really do. And I almost never use this. I only ever use this when I'm mixing my fertilizers or Super Thrive. So I guess that would be a good option is to mix it if you're using the Super Thrive, but really, honestly, you don't need a fancy watering can. So the next thing that I would say as an honorable mention is potting tools. I know. Honestly, these right here are your best potting tools. I use my hands on everything. I know sometimes people think that's gross because you know, if you think about what soil is, it's kind of icky. Honestly, like I find myself repotting with my hands versus getting out like all my fancy tools and stuff like that. Now repotting can be easier with tools, but they're not necessary. They're really not. I literally this year or last year just finally got a repotting mat and I still am finding myself not using it. You don't need a ton of fancy equipment like 
potting tools or anything like that. You really don't. You can, it can make your life easier, especially when you are starting to get bigger plants or you're starting to get more plants that will be essential, you know, down the road, but you don't, you don't need it immediately. A potting mat could be a trash bag. You could take a trash bag and put it on the floor and repot with it. But you know what? <laughs> Everybody's got a broom and a, and a mop and a vacuum. You can clean it up afterward. It's not a big deal. So I would say that repotting mats and like potting tools are just not super necessary. And then the last honorable mention that I will say is something that I, I don't really know why I did it, but um, I bought like all this stuff to like wipe my leaves down. Now I will say that these wipes are great. These are really good wipes. They get rid of a lot of the hard water buildup that you might get on your leaves from like plant nurseries. And then this is a good like, it's fun. Like I'll show you, you just put it on and it's like a fun little duster. I find myself cleaning my house with this, like not even like my plants. These are good to have. You do want to dust off your plants but if you're just getting a new plant, your plants are not gonna get dusty within a few months, so you're fine. You can obviously use a dish rag. You can use an old shirt. You can bring it to the sink and rinse it off. It's not that big of a deal. Don't waste your money on stuff like this right away. You can later on if you wanna waste some money, but you do not need all of these fancy things to like clean your plants off with. It's just not necessary. But if you do, I would recommend these wipes. These are really good. They're biodegradable. So if you throw them in the garbage, they're not going to mess with the environment or anything like that. And they are, they clean my leaves really well. So I do like these, but you don't need them. So that is it. So those are some things that I think are pretty essential when you are first starting out with plants or you just want to kind of up your game a little bit and get some stuff to keep your plants alive and thriving. Let me know in the comments if there are anything or any tools or anything like that that I missed out because I would love to have a discussion in the comments. But yeah, like I said, I mean, these are stuff that I really use the most, gravitate towards and kind of have had since the beginning. Obviously I've upgraded like my brands and stuff like that, but it's just, those are just really good things to have and help your plants survive. But that's it for today. I hope you guys all have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.